Hi everybody, it is the end of the growing season here. I'm in zone 6B and it's time to cut and dig up and divide all the dahlias. We live in zone 6B, so our first frost date is between October 1st and October 10th. We did have our first frost on October 1st, but it wasn't a killing frost. And so as you can see, it's October 17th and I'm still getting Dahlia blooms, which has really been fun. I still have a bouquet in my house, which is awesome. Really enjoying that. Um, but that just means that I've been waiting for that killing frost and it hasn't happened. So now I need to cut down all my dahlias because a lot of them have powdery mildew and other diseases and I need to let them mature a little bit before I dig them up. So today I'm gonna cut all the dahlias down. I'm gonna deal with the diseased ones. This is a diseased dahlia right here is powdery mildew. With the dahlia plants that are relatively healthy, I'm actually going to, once I've dug up my dahlias, I'm gonna do chop and drop. So. This is a little bit of an experiment for sure. A lot of people think that if you do chop and drop, you end up with diseases, you spread diseases. And so I'm doing a little bit of an experiment because we use JMS, JLF, and LAB. I want to see if I can use chop and drop and rely on those garden amendments to maintain and deal with plant disease instead of worrying about, you know, keeping the garden sanitized. Gardens aren't very sanitary places, and so I, I don't want to rely on having everything be sanitized when I'm planting. I want to rely on nature more and let nature uh, select the healthy plants and kill off the not healthy plants. So that's kind of what I'm going to do, chop and drop. I want to chop and drop because that basically takes all the nutrients that the plant has taken from the ground and it gives it back to the ground. So I want to you know, work with the soil and be acting in reciprocity with the soil and giving back what it's given me. So that is the plan with my dahlias. So I've got my big clippers, I got my little snips. So this is one of my dahlia seedlings. It's like an orange, yellow with purple underneath the petals. So I don't have a name for it, but that's the description of what it looks like. I wanna keep this on it somewhere. That's cut down, I'm gonna deal with that foliage. I'm gonna cut down all my other dahlias that have powdery mildew. So a really interesting thing is the ones that seem to have the powdery mildew are all the same dahlia. So I, I grew this seedling last year and then saved the tubers. So I grew, I think four, I had four tubers from that original plant that I saved and it came up. They all have powdery mildew and the other ones don't. And that's just very interesting. I know nothing about like the actual genetics of the dahlia diseases or how it works. So I'm wondering if you can tell me in the comments, do dahlia tubers pass on powdery mildew? Like if you save those tubers, are you destined to have powdery mildew for every plant going forward that comes from that original plant. I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys know. So this guy here does appear to have some disease. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think I want to save this foliage. This is a pretty healthy plant. I think I'm gonna save this. So this dahlia here, it's also a dahlia seedling that I saved from last year and I, I just didn't fully realize exactly what I saved. So when I planted it and it came up, the, flume, the blooms on it, I just, I didn't love. So I wrote on here, don't save. So um, if I do dig these dahlias up, I, I probably won't dig them up. I'll probably just let them rot in the ground and sort of return the nutrients to the soil and then we'll have a spot to plant a tuber next year. So 
it's kind of turning out that most of my dahlias are pretty diseased. Kind of a bummer, but not surprising because I let them go so long this season. And most people might have dug them up a week ago. Now that I have all of these guys cut down, I'm just going to give them some time for the tubers to mature. I'm super curious if Taylor can actually hot compost all this. There's so much of it. All right, so there you have it. All the dahlias are cut down. We're gonna wait just a little bit before we dig up the tubers. And then I will show you how to dig those up and then how to divide them and then how to save them so that they don't rot throughout the winter. Hi everybody. So I'm going to show you guys how to dig up dahlias in the garden. So um, I cut these down on Tuesday. Today's Thursday. I don't actually want to dig up my dahlias yet. I'm gonna give them about one to two weeks of time to mature in the ground. But I'm going to dig up some tubers that I don't particularly want to save. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so I have the ones labeled that I want to save. So I'm going to dig up one that's not labeled. So let's see right over here. I'm just going to use my trowel. I've got my baby in my back. So it's kind of hard to do this. I don't want her to fall out. But so normally what you do is you take a pitchfork and you'd sort of wiggle them out. But oh my nose. Are in there. But my beds are really loose soil so I don't need that you don't till so it's so really easy to get your dollies up okay I'm gonna shake off the dirt and there you have it so for these dollies getting them out of the ground even after I've left them in for one to two weeks to mature I'm actually just gonna put this in a bucket and put it in my basement for a couple weeks make sure you label 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 your dollies otherwise you've literally no idea what you're planting wait until it's winter and I have nothing to do that's me I always have something to do Wait till I, have, I can divide them. I'll divide them in the winter and store them then. Okay, so Taylor and I were talking about all of the dahlia foliage that has disease. And I was just like asking him what he thought we could do with it. If we thought, if he thought we could hot compost it, which I think we will do with some of it. But he suggested making a JLF for a dahlia specific plant. I'm going to take the diseased dahlia foliage and I'm going to make a bucket of JLF for the next season. Hi everybody, so I am going to be digging up this dahlia that I grew in a container this summer. It's a variety called Linda's Baby. I don't really need to like use a pitchfork or a spade. I'm just going to try and loosen the soil around the tubers, kind of break up some of these root systems. I just want to feel around. I just want to be careful to not pull it out. I did this with one earlier where I pulled it out before it was loose enough and I broke it apart before I had a chance to really like divide it the way I wanted to. So. I just want to make sure I have enough. Oh, oh yeah, it's really in there. Okay, I'm going to get a bowl. Well, let's get some of this dirt out of there. Get a little bit more room to work. I'm going to save all of this container potting soil because it's got some good JMS and JLF added and some LAB. And so it's actually a pretty good dirt. So I'm going to use it next year. 
for my containers next year i'm not going to grow dahlias in containers because the space where i want to put the containers is too hot for them so i'm going to grow zinnias next year in containers instead i'll just grow dahlias in the ground where they can be a little bit cooler i bought one tuber this year of linda's baby and i'm excited to see them grow more next year oh here we go Break off the soil. Oof. Oops, sorry, little guy. I want to be able to divide the tubers. I don't want them to break off because you want each tuber to have at least one eye on them. And sometimes you can divide them in a way that if it broken off, it wouldn't have an eye. But if you cut it intentionally, it can give you more tubers than you would have ended up with. Break off all this dirt. I'm going to go wash this off in my utility sink. Most people use like a hose, or like a sprayer to wash off their dahlias. And that's because they have like a lot they're doing. I just use my sink because I have like a thing to catch the dirt. And then I don't have to be outside in the cold. Okay, I'll be back. This is my bin. Then I'm going to store my Dahlia tubers in. I'm super excited about these. I just got these. They seem like they're going to hold up really well. They seem pretty sturdy. I'm going to label this. So here is the Dahlia tubers. All right, let's divide this up. So I've got my snips here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of divide it up into groups to start with. So here's kind of a natural break right here. These guys are so little, I don't think they're actually going to. I'm going to cut off some of these root systems here. Can't tell, I have a cold. <laughs> Yay, fall. So it looks like if I divide this carefully, I'll get two viable tubers from right here. So I'm just going to cut them down right down the middle. Now I have, I can see the little eyes on each of these. So I'm just looking. Oh, here's my. I'm just looking for at least one eye per tuber. I'm going to rinse these off one more time and then I'll let them dry out and then we will store them in the box with some vermiculite. Okay, what else do we got here? So here's the original tuber. So I definitely want to save that one. I know that one has an eye for sure, but I just need to be careful how I divide it off. This is really exciting. So I started out with one tuber and I already have, I have five. I mean, a good rule of thumb is just try and give each dolly tuber the most amount of neck as possible. Here we are, the seven tubers from one. So that's six more tubers than I started with. And I mean, I think, you know, Linda's baby's in the like 12 to $16 range. So that's really exciting. I'm saving myself a lot of money by dividing and saving for the next year. Dividing and saving your tubers is the way to go. Let's see, how many am I saving? 10 tubers from one. I mean, that's just so remarkable. Very exciting. So they're pretty dry. I mean, they could use, you know, maybe a 24 hour period of just letting them out dry out in the air. Um, I'm not super worried about that because we live in a really, really dry area. I'm going to use vermiculite. I, in the past, have used the plastic wrap method, which I'll show you. But the plastic wrap method, is it's a lot of waste and it's a lot of use of plastic. So it's not my favorite. Um, vermiculite is also a spendier. I'm going to try a triangle with some dolly tubers that I don't particularly love and don't care if they don't make it. And then I will do vermiculite because vermiculite is pretty tried and true method to save dolly tubers. I'm going to use vermiculite and see how it does in my area. And I'll also do a little bit of plastic wrap. So I'm going to start out with like a layer here of vermiculite. Just a layer so that the dollies can sit in something and then nestle these in. I just want to make sure that they are not touching. The nice thing about using a bin like this with the vermiculite is I can layer it. So I just want to make sure not to jostle them around too much. And then I'm just going to put another layer of vermiculite on top. Put it around, fully cover them. I'm going to close up this bin. I'm going to take it down. I'm going to put it in my basement storage. There you go, Luna's baby. Ready for its long sleep. 